after. But first, with the market down again today, the big question has to be, is this the overdue correction we've been waiting for? And if so, what stock should we line ourselves up for when we think we've hit the bottom? To answer the questions, these important questions, is Simon Bond from Morgan's. Stockbroking, just Morgan's? Anything you like. OK, anything you like. How are you, mate? Good, thank you, Peter. Good to see you. Thank you. Are you thinking to yourself, is this the overdue correction actually happening for our, before our very eyes? I, I think it is. I think it is. There, there's two things: earnings, mm -hmm. which are upon us, yep, in America, and also oh, the ones are coming. The talk, the talk about tapering, etc. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to guys who've been in the U.S. just recently. What they're actually firmly convinced is that is that the incoming Fed is going to be uh, what we call it, very uh, sympathetic yeah. to uh, to deflationary pressures yeah. and unemployment, which means that that you will see more stimulus. Yeah. on an ongoing basis so that the, the yield curve yeah. is going to be more of a normalised yield curve. Short rates at the short end yeah. will be low yeah. and they'll probably be pushed up. At the Are you saying that the tapering they're expecting to be slower than faster? Because if you taper fast you're pulling money out. So I think they're going to come up with some, some imaginative schemes yeah. to, uh, to, to spur growth because if you look at if you look at what's but then Tom, can I interrupt you? I hate to interrupt you because some some of my viewers actually say I interrupt too much. So, but but if they like they tapered in December, mm -hmm. they tapered in January. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fast tapering, and that's are you saying that's a, against what people were expecting? Because I think that's the case. They seem to be going a bit faster, and that's why the market might be a little bit spooked. Yeah, I I think that they're going they're doing too much, too soon. Yeah. And you and I talk about these things all the time with the deflationary pressures. Mm. And let's just have a look at the retailers. Last week, Reject Shop came out and said Christmas was tough. The mm. share price tanked, what, 35%? Mm. JB Hi-Fi came out the next day and said, well, we, we better give the market some good news. Mm. So they had a, sort of a quasi upgrade. Mm. The stock went up temporarily. And the next day, the, the, it just got absolutely thumped. Club. Yep. So I think what... I think there's a there's a big dichotomy that's happening at the moment, and the, still the one that worries me is unemployment, mm. because unemployment I, in America, unemployment globally. Okay, right. And I, I think that Australia is we're in for some some very tough times unless we we put our sort of our nose to the wheel and say we've got to be doing something more than just digging stuff up and hoping that China is going to continue to buy it at, at high prices. Because if you see it a global slowdown on the back of uh, some over tapering one might call it yeah. and they could always reverse course and I, I do think yeah. that they will have to do something to reverse course yeah. uh, we're in for some we're in for some rocky times with yes yeah. because the reality is it's been Bernanke his last two actions before he, he checks out has been a taper two months in a row which probably has surprised the experts you're talking about who are thinking that that would stimulate a little bit more to keep the economy going. It's going to be interesting. Yellen might just come, you now. she's in charge and say, right, B Benny Boy's done some tough stuff the last two months. Let's give America a chance. I think she's going to be very much on the side of, uh, of the people who are looking for work. Yeah. I think she's going to be very much on the side of, of the anti-deflationary stance. I read a speech of hers. She's on my bit of inflation. Just, just recently. Yeah. Uh, that hopefully went on your blog, if it's not there now, it's, it's going up soon. Yeah. And I, I put her speech there and she was very much in the Christine Lagarde camp of saying we will not tolerate a deflationary spiral because that concerns us significantly more than any inflationary pressures that we're seeing at the moment. So, so if I'm listening to you correctly, and I know I am, uh, you're saying, OK, this is a bit of an overdue correction and, and this tapering hasn't helped, or has actually encouraged the, the correction. But if Yellen is really nice to the American economy and keeps the stimulation going, then we can see the market come back later in the year. Well, the, yes, exactly. Yes, good. And that's but, what my viewers want to know. But the market in the US, we, we tend to forget, has been at record highs. Great, great returns, yeah. And we, we, we'd wake up and we'd see the news every day. A new record high on the S&P. NASDAQ mm. is at a 10-year high, 11-year. Mm. We just weren't following through. No. no. Isn't, the Australian market, and, yeah. it, and you, look at, you look at the indices and you think, what is go, what's, what's wrong? The market would go, the US market would go down 50 points. 
we'd go down 30, the US market would then go up 20 and we'd go down 10 the yeah. next day. But as you know, Simon, we had high dollar, we had a government that wasn't sort of uh, responsive to business mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and we were predicting the economy was slowing down and that actually has happened. Mm -hmm. So this is, I think, this is a possibility of a comeback year but we need a lot of good things to happen and one of them will be Wall Street not going backwards all the time because that will make it really hard for us, won't it? Well, I think the policy makers, the, the, and I wrote, I wrote this down before I came on, I think the big issue that faces policy makers around the globe in 2014 mm. will be as follows. The cost of, what is the cost of free? Like everybody gives things away yeah, these days. Yeah. I did some studies on some of the websites. The top 500 websites by popularity, you'll notice that the majority offer services for free. So how do companies generate revenue mm. when everyone's giving things away? Mm. And you look at the Googles and the Facebooks of this world mm. that give everything away, but what people don't understand is what you're giving them in return is valuable information. Mm. The, my kids use Facebook all the time, and I, I say to them, you, you are giving these companies so much of your private information that they are on selling yeah. to other, other companies that are going to be able to garner value. So the thing that concerns me significantly is, is a concentration of wealth at the top end and a significant hollowing out of the middle class. Yeah, good point, good point. Okay, let, let, let's go and look at some stocks now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I sent a few questions over to you today and one was, you know, is there a discre consumer discretionary stock you like at the moment? <sighs> Every day we look, but... Yeah, we all do look. But you, you get good news from JB Hi-Fi mm. and the stock gets whacked. Mm. Treasury wines today. Mm. I, I think from memory, unless I'm dreaming that the stock was down 30, 30. I think I heard that too, yeah. And the headline, they tried to get prices up, so volumes went down. So unfortunately, Australians have, have continued, the, the retailers, have seduced the consumer into continually looking for a bargain. Mm. So if you go into... I'd say Dan Murphy's helped in that particular case, doesn't it? Sure, but if you go into Dan Murphy's and you saw a wine there that was, say, $25 mm. last month, it's now down to $12, you're not going to pay 25 bucks for that wine again. Mm. And, that, and that's the problem. They're, they're killing their own prices, and I think that Woolworths and also Coles will be significantly... Uh, looking to go down the road of, of private brands, their own labels, because they'll, they'll say, well, that's where the margin is. Mm -hmm. And that's going to put further pressure on the bigger brands, such as Penfolds, etc. Okay, so you really, you, at this stage, you really haven't got a consumer dis discretionary stock you support? Well, do you call Woolworths dis consumer well, discretionary? Well, it's more staple, isn't it? I, th I think, so, if you're going to buy a retail yeah. stock... Well, next question. Do you like Woolworths this year? I still like Woolworths. Yeah. I, I think... Yeah, I'm hoping to buy, if the market dips, I want to try and get it at 32 or 31. Well, it's like CBA. It comes down, but it always bounces back. Yeah, yeah, because there's people who want to buy it at 32 or 31. It's a quality stock, and you, there's always plenty of people in there. Mm. They're, they're changing the store formats around, which is good. Those, <clears throat> I noticed that those silly turnstiles have gone, which, yeah. which Wes Farmers brought, brought in. That was a great idea. Mm. And there's still plenty of people in Dan Murphy's and the liquor shop, mm. so maybe that's an Australian okay. thing. Yeah, OK, so... Obviously, you still like Wes Farmers and you still like Woolworths. There are two companies that, and let's face it, Wes Farmers surprised a lot of people. They made Coles work because Coles suffered for a long time, didn't it? But what worries me about those companies is their, their absolute strength, the, the monopoly or duopoly that they've been able to assume. It, and we simply look at the petrol market. I saw some figures the other day that said that, that between those two groups, they control in excess of 50% of, of petrol sales. Yeah. Again, the little guy who, who may have had a, a workshop that hung off it and, and he was hoping just to sell a bit of petrol to get people into, uh, into his business. Mm -hmm. And what happens to him? What happens to small business? And I get particularly frightened about it. It's been challenged for the, for the current federal government. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing, I asked you to look into a company called Logicams. Mm -hmm. Now, Julia Lee mentioned it on the show last week. Mm -hmm. I did a bit of homework on it. It seems like an interesting company. What do you think of Logicams? Well, the stock price has been belted. Mm -hmm. and. It's Recently in, or over, oh, over the last few months? Okay. It's in the engineering, asset management, mining, minerals, hydrocarbons. And natural gas was a part that I liked about it. What, what did you, you. Companies got? headquartered in Perth. So I, I think what's happened is that the market said mining company, Perth, whack, and they've just put a big red Mining line services. Yeah. Yeah. It's on a PE, current PE of eight. Yeah. 
fully frank yield of around seven. And I will, looking at the chart mm. and looking at the research and looking at what's been going on, yeah. I think it's a stock that you could perhaps start to accumulate mm. around these levels or slightly lower levels because mm. when these businesses bounce, they, they bounce well. Yeah. And if you're looking at a real business with, as we said, PE of eight and fully frank yield, those numbers are quite compelling on a fundamental basis. Mm. And it's a, it's a business that it, it's well, it's a, it's a good business. Yeah, and, and like a nice, nice dividend yield of seven. We're, I'm not actually tipping that, but all I'm saying is that Julia liked it, mm. uh, and the, the work I did, not bad. So we'll keep following it, and if the market going down, we might get a nice price. I think that you'll find that there's there, there'll be some very good bargains around yeah. for those people who are prepared to say, is this a business for the future? Mm. Or is this a business that's passed? Simon Bond, always great to talk to you, mate. See you in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you, Peter. After the break, is there still value in this market? David Buckland from the Montgomery Fund will reveal.